A scanning electron microscope SEM, is a type of electron microscope that produces images of a sample by scanning the surface with a focused beam of electrons. The electrons interact with atoms in the sample, producing various signals that contain information about the surface topography and composition of the sample. The electron beam is scanned in a raster scan pattern, and the position of the beam is combined with the detected signal to produce an image. SEM can achieve resolution better than 1 nanometer. Specimens are observed in high vacuum in conventional SEM, or in low vacuum or wet conditions in variable pressure or environmental SEM, and at a wide range of cryogenic or elevated temperatures with specialized instruments. The most common SEM mode is the detection of secondary electrons emitted by atoms excited by the electron beam. The number of secondary electrons that can be detected depends, among other things, on specimen topography. By scanning the sample and collecting the secondary electrons that are emitted using a special detector, an image displaying the topography of the surface is created. History An account of the early history of SEM has been presented by McMullen. Although Max Knoll produced a photo with a 50 mm object field width showing channeling contrast by the use of an electron beam scanner, it was Manfred von Arden who in 1937 invented a true microscope with high magnification by scanning a very small raster with a demagnified and finely focused electron beam. Arden applied the scanning principle not only to achieve magnification but also to purposefully eliminate the chromatic aberration otherwise inherent in the electron microscope. He further discussed the various detection modes, possibilities and theory of SEM, together with the construction of the first high magnification SEM. Further work was reported by Zwarikin's group, followed by the Cambridge groups in the 1950s and early 1960s headed by Charles Oatley, all of which finally led to the marketing of the first commercial instrument by Cambridge Scientific Instrument Company as the Stereoscan in 1965, which was delivered to DuPont. Topic: <laughs> Principles and capacities. The signals used by a scanning electron microscope to produce an image result from interactions of the electron beam with atoms at various depths within the sample. Various types of signals are produced including secondary electrons reflected or back-scattered electrons BSE, characteristic X-rays and light cathodoluminescence CL, absorbed current, specimen current and transmitted electrons. Secondary electron detectors are standard equipment in all SEMs, but it is rare for a single machine to have detectors for all other possible signals. In secondary electron imaging say, the secondary electrons are emitted from very close to the specimen surface. Consequently, SEI can produce very high-resolution images of a sample surface, revealing details less than 1 nanometer in size. Backscattered electrons BSE are beam electrons that are reflected from the sample by elastic scattering. They emerge from deeper locations within the specimen and, consequently, the resolution of BSE images is less than Shea images. However, BSE are often used in analytical SEM, along with the spectra made from the characteristic X-rays, because the intensity of the BSE signal is strongly related to the atomic number Z of the specimen. BSE images can provide information about the distribution, but not the identity, of different elements in the sample. In samples predominantly composed of light elements, such as biological specimens, BSE imaging can image colloidal gold immuno labels of 5 or 10 nanometers diameter, which would otherwise be difficult or impossible to detect in secondary electron images. Characteristic X-rays are emitted when the electron beam removes an inner shell electron from the sample, causing a higher energy electron to fill the shell and release energy. The energy or wavelength of these characteristic X-rays can be measured by energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy or wavelength dispersive X-ray spectroscopy and used to identify and measure the abundance of elements in the sample and map their distribution. 
Due to the very narrow electron beam, SEM micrographs have a large depth of field yielding a characteristic three-dimensional appearance useful for understanding the surface structure of a sample. This is exemplified by the micrograph of pollen shown above. A wide range of magnifications is possible, from about 10 times about equivalent to that of a powerful hand lens to more than 500,000 times, about 250 times the magnification limit of the best light microscopes. <laughs> <laughs> Sample preparation SEM samples are prepared to withstand the vacuum conditions and the high energy beam of electrons, and have to be small enough to fit on the specimen stage. Samples are generally mounted rigidly to a specimen holder or stub using a conductive adhesive. SEM is used extensively for defect analysis of semiconductor wafers, and manufacturers make instruments that can examine any part of a 300 mm semiconductor wafer. Many instruments have chambers that can tilt an object of that size to 45 degrees and provide continuous 360 degrees rotation. Nonconductive specimens collect charge when scanned by the electron beam, and especially in secondary electron imaging mode, this causes scanning faults and other image artifacts. For conventional imaging in the SEM, specimens must be electrically conductive, at least at the surface, and electrically grounded to prevent the accumulation of electrostatic charge. Metal objects require little special preparation for SEM except for cleaning and conductively mounting to a specimen stub. Non-conducting materials are usually coated with an ultra-thin coating of electrically conducting material, deposited on the sample either by low vacuum sputter coating or by high vacuum evaporation. Conductive materials in current use for specimen coating include gold, gold, palladium alloy, platinum, iridium, tungsten, chromium, osmium, and graphite. Coating with heavy metals may increase signal noise ratio for samples of low atomic number Z. The improvement arises because secondary electron emission for high Z materials is enhanced. An alternative to coating for some biological samples is to increase the bulk conductivity of the material by impregnation with osmium using variants of the OTO staining method O-osmium tetroxide, T-thiocarbohydroside, O-osmium. Nonconducting specimens may be imaged without coating using an environmental SEM ESEM or low-voltage mode of SEM operation. In ESEM instruments the specimen is placed in a relatively high pressure chamber and the electron optical column is differentially pumped to keep vacuum adequately low at the electron gun. The high pressure region around the sample in the ESEM neutralizes charge and provides an amplification of the secondary electron signal. Low voltage SEM is typically conducted in an instrument with a field emission guns FEG which is capable of producing high primary electron brightness and small spot size even at low accelerating potentials. To prevent charging of non-conductive specimens, operating conditions must be adjusted such that the incoming beam current is equal to some of outcoming secondary and backscattered electrons currents a condition that is more often met at accelerating voltages of 0.3 to 4 kV. Synthetic replicas can be made to avoid the use of original samples when they are not suitable or available for SEM examination due to methodological obstacles or legal issues. This technique is achieved in two steps. One, a mold of the original surface is made using a silicone-based dental elastomer, and two, a replica of the original surface is obtained by pouring a synthetic resin into the mold. Embedding in a resin with further polishing to a mirror-like finish can be used for both biological and material specimens when imaging in backscattered electrons or when doing quantitative X-ray microanalysis. The main preparation techniques are not required in the environmental SEM outlined below, but some biological specimens can benefit from fixation. Biological samples For SEM, a specimen is normally required to be completely dry, since the specimen chamber is at high vacuum. 
hard, dry materials such as wood, bone, feathers, dried insects, or shells including egg shells can be examined with little further treatment, but living cells and tissues and whole, soft-bodied organisms require chemical fixation to preserve and stabilize their structure. Fixation is usually performed by incubation in a solution of a buffered chemical fixative, such as glutaraldehyde, sometimes in combination with formaldehyde and other fixatives, and optionally followed by postfixation with osmium tetroxide. The fixed tissue is then dehydrated. Because air drying causes collapse and shrinkage, this is commonly achieved by replacement of water in the cells with organic solvents such as ethanol or acetone, and replacement of these solvents in turn with a transitional fluid such as liquid carbon dioxide by critical point drying. The carbon dioxide is finally removed while in a supercritical state, so that no gas-liquid interface is present within the sample during drying. The dry specimen is usually mounted on a specimen stub using an adhesive such as epoxy resin or electrically conductive double-sided adhesive tape, and sputter coated with gold or gold-palladium alloy before examination in the microscope. Samples may be sectioned with a microtome if information about the organism's internal ultrastructure is to be exposed for imaging. If the SEM is equipped with a cold stage for cryomicroscopy, cryofixation may be used and low temperature scanning electron microscopy performed on the cryogenically fixed specimens. Cryo fixed specimens may be cryo fractured under vacuum in a special apparatus to reveal internal structure, sputter coated and transferred onto the SEM cryo stage while still frozen. Low temperature scanning electron microscopy Lieutenant SEM is also applicable to the imaging of temperature sensitive materials such as ice and fats. Freeze fracturing, freeze etch or freeze and break is a preparation method particularly useful for examining lipid membranes and their incorporated proteins in face on view. The preparation method reveals the proteins embedded in the lipid bilayer. Topic. Materials Backscattered electron imaging, quantitative X-ray analysis, and X-ray mapping of specimens often requires grinding and polishing the surfaces to an ultra-smooth surface. Specimens that undergo WDS or EDS analysis are often carbon-coated. In general, metals are not coated prior to imaging in the SEM because they are conductive and provide their own pathway to ground. Fractography is the study of fractured surfaces that can be done on a light microscope or, commonly, on an SEM. The fractured surface is cut to a suitable size, cleaned of any organic residues, and mounted on a specimen holder for viewing in the SEM. Integrated circuits may be cut with a focused ion beam fib or other ion beam milling instrument for viewing in the SEM. The SEM in the first case may be incorporated into the fib. Metals, geological specimens, and integrated circuits all may also be chemically polished for viewing in the SEM. Special high-resolution coating techniques are required for high-magnification imaging of inorganic thin films. Topic. Scanning process and image formation In a typical SEM, an electron beam is thermionically emitted from an electron gun fitted with a tungsten filament cathode. Tungsten is normally used in thermionic electron guns because it has the highest melting point and lowest vapor pressure of all metals, thereby allowing it to be electrically heated for electron emission, and because of its low cost. Other types of electron emitters include lanthanum hexaboridae lab 6 cathodes, which can be used in a standard tungsten filament SEM if the vacuum system is upgraded or field emission guns FEG, which may be of the cold cathode type using tungsten single crystal emitters or the thermally assisted Schottky type, that use emitters of zirconium oxide. The electron beam, which typically has an energy ranging from 0.2 keV to 40 keV, is focused by one or two condenser lenses to a spot about 0.4 nm to 5 nm in diameter. 
the beam passes through pairs of scanning coils or pairs of deflector plates in the electron column, typically in the final lens, which deflect the beam in the X and Y axes so that it scans in a raster fashion over a rectangular area of the sample surface. When the primary electron beam interacts with the sample, the electrons lose energy by repeated random scattering and absorption within a teardrop-shaped volume of the specimen known as the interaction volume, which extends from less than 100 nanometers to approximately 5 micrometers into the surface. The size of the interaction volume depends on the electron's landing energy, the atomic number of the specimen and the specimen's density. The energy exchange between the electron beam and the sample results in the reflection of high-energy electrons by elastic scattering, emission of secondary electrons by inelastic scattering and the emission of electromagnetic radiation, each of which can be detected by specialized detectors. The beam current absorbed by the specimen can also be detected and used to create images of the distribution of specimen current. Electronic amplifiers of various types are used to amplify the signals, which are displayed as variations in brightness on a computer monitor or, for vintage models, on a cathode ray tube. Each pixel of computer video memory is synchronized with the position of the beam on the specimen in the microscope, and the resulting image is, therefore, a distribution map of the intensity of the signal being emitted from the scanned area of the specimen. Older microscopes captured images on film, but most modern instrument collect digital images. Topic: <laughs> Magnification. Magnification in an SEM can be controlled over a range of about 6 orders of magnitude from about 10 to 500,000 times. Unlike optical and transmission electron microscopes, image magnification in an SEM is not a function of the power of the objective lens. SEMs may have condenser and objective lenses, but their function is to focus the beam to a spot, and not to image the specimen. Provided the electron gun can generate a beam with sufficiently small diameter, and SEM could in principle work entirely without condenser or objective lenses, although it might not be very versatile or achieve very high resolution. In an SEM, as in scanning probe microscopy, magnification results from the ratio of the dimensions of the raster on the specimen and the raster on the display device. Assuming that the display screen has a fixed size, higher magnification results from reducing the size of the raster on the specimen, and vice versa. Magnification is therefore controlled by the current supplied to the X, Y scanning coils, or the voltage supplied to the X, Y deflector plates, and not by objective lens power. Topic detection of secondary electrons The most common imaging mode collects low energy escape from within the sample. As the angle of incidence increases, the interaction volume increases and the escape distance of one side of the beam decreases, resulting in more secondary electrons being emitted from the sample. Thus steep surfaces and edges tend to be brighter than flat surfaces, which results in images with a well-defined, three-dimensional appearance. Using the signal of secondary electrons image resolution less than 0.5 nm is possible. <laughs> <laughs> Detection of backscattered electrons Backscattered electrons BSE consist of high-energy electrons originating in the electron beam, that are reflected or backscattered out of the specimen interaction volume by elastic scattering interactions with specimen atoms. Since heavy elements high atomic number backscatter electrons more strongly than light elements low atomic number, and thus appear brighter in the image, BSEs are used to detect contrast between areas with different chemical compositions. The everhart thornley detector, which is normally positioned to one side of the specimen, is inefficient for the detection of backscattered electrons because few such electrons are emitted in the solid angle subtended by the detector, and because the positively biased detection grid has little ability to attract the higher energy BSE. Dedicated backscattered electron detectors are positioned above the sample in a donut 
type arrangement, concentric with the electron beam, maximizing the solid angle of collection. BSE detectors are usually either of scintillator or of semiconductor types. When all parts of the detector are used to collect electrons symmetrically about the beam, atomic number contrast is produced. However, strong topographic contrast is produced by collecting back scattered electrons from one side above the specimen using an asymmetrical, directional BSE detector. The resulting contrast appears as illumination of the topography from that side. Semiconductor detectors can be made in radial segments that can be switched in or out to control the type of contrast produced and its directionality. Backscattered electrons can also be used to form an electron backscatter diffraction image that can be used to determine the crystallographic structure of the specimen. Beam injection analysis of semiconductors The nature of the SEM's probe, energetic electrons, makes it uniquely suited to examining the optical and electronic properties of semiconductor materials. The high-energy electrons from the SEM beam will inject charge carriers into the semiconductor. Thus, beam electrons lose energy by promoting electrons from the valence band into the conduction band, leaving behind holes. In a direct bandgap material, recombination of these electron hole pairs will result in cathodoluminescence. If the sample contains an internal electric field, such as is present at a p-n junction, the SEM beam injection of carriers will cause electron beam induced current EBIC to flow. Cathodoluminescence and EBIC are referred to as beam injection techniques, and are very powerful probes of the optoelectronic behavior of semiconductors, in particular for studying nanoscale features and defects. Cathodoluminescence <coughs> 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 Cathodoluminescence, the emission of light when atoms excited by high-energy electrons return to their ground state, is analogous to UV-induced fluorescence, and some materials such as zinc sulfide and some fluorescent dyes, exhibit both phenomena. Over the last decades, cathodoluminescence was most commonly experienced as the light emission from the inner surface of the cathode ray tube in television sets and computer CRT monitors. In the SEM, CL detectors either collect all light emitted by the specimen or can analyze the wavelengths emitted by the specimen and display an emission spectrum or an image of the distribution of cathodoluminescence emitted by the specimen in real color. <laughs> X-ray microanalysis Characteristic X-rays that are produced by the interaction of electrons with the sample may also be detected in an SEM equipped for energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy or wavelength dispersive X-ray spectroscopy. Analysis of the X-ray signals may be used to map the distribution and estimate the abundance of elements in the sample. Topic: Resolution of the SEM SEM is not a camera and the detector is not continuously image forming like a CCD array or film. Unlike in an optical system, the resolution is not limited by the diffraction limit, fineness of lenses or mirrors or detector array resolution. The focusing optics can be large and coarse, and the Shea detector is fist-sized and simply detects current. Instead, the spatial resolution of the SEM depends on the size of the electron spot, which in turn depends on both the wavelength of the electrons and the electron optical system that produces the scanning beam. The resolution is also limited by the size of the interaction volume, the volume of specimen material that interacts with the electron beam. The spot size and the interaction volume are both large compared to the distances between atoms, so the resolution of the SEM is not high enough to image individual atoms, as is possible with transmission electron microscope 
The SEM has compensating advantages, though, including the ability to image a comparatively large area of the specimen, the ability to image bulk materials not just thin films or foils, and the variety of analytical modes available for measuring the composition and properties of the specimen. Depending on the instrument, the resolution can fall somewhere between less than 1 nanometer and 20 nanometers. As of 2009, the world's highest resolution conventional 30 kV SEM can reach a point resolution of 0.4 nanometers using a secondary electron detector. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Environmental SEM Conventional SEM requires samples to be imaged under vacuum, because a gas atmosphere rapidly spreads and attenuates electron beams. As a consequence, samples that produce a significant amount of vapor, e.g. wet biological samples or oil-bearing rock, must be either dried or cryogenically frozen. Processes involving phase transitions, such as the drying of adhesives or melting of alloys, liquid transport, chemical reactions, and solid air gas systems, in general cannot be observed. Some observations of living insects have been possible, however. The first commercial development of the ESEM in the late 1980s allowed samples to be observed in low pressure gaseous environments, e.g., 1 to 50 Tor or 0.1 to 6.7 kPa, and high relative humidity up to 100%. This was made possible by the development of a secondary electron detector capable of operating in the presence of water vapor and by the use of pressure limiting apertures with differential pumping in the path of the electron beam to separate the vacuum region around the gun and lenses from the sample chamber. The first commercial ESEMs were produced by the Electroscan Corporation in USA in 1988. Electroscan was taken over by Philips, who later sold their electron optics division to FEI Company. In 1996, ESEM is especially useful for non metallic and biological materials because coating with carbon or gold is unnecessary. Uncoated plastics and elastomers can be routinely examined, as can uncoated biological samples. Coating can be difficult to reverse, may conceal small features on the surface of the sample and may reduce the value of the results obtained. X-ray analysis is difficult with a coating of a heavy metal, so carbon coatings are routinely used in conventional SEMs, but ESEM makes it possible to perform X-ray microanalysis on uncoated non-conductive specimens, however some specific for ESEM artifacts are introduced in X-ray analysis. ESEM may be the preferred for electron microscopy of unique samples from criminal or civil actions, where forensic analysis may need to be repeated by several different experts. It is possible to study specimens in liquid with ESEM or with other liquid phase electron microscopy methods. Topic: Transmission SEM The SEM can also be used in transmission mode by simply incorporating an appropriate detector below a thin specimen section. Both bright and dark field imaging has been reported in the generally low accelerating beam voltage range used in SEM, which increases the contrast of unstained biological specimens at high magnifications with a field emission electron gun. This mode of operation has been abbreviated by the acronym TSEM. Topic. Color in SEM Electron microscopes do not naturally produce color images, as an SEM produces a single value per pixel, this value corresponds to the number of electrons received by the detector during a small period of time of the scanning when the beam is targeted to the X, y pixel position. This single number is usually represented, for each pixel, by a gray level, forming a black and white image. However, several ways have been used to get color electron microscopy images. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> False color using a single detector. 
On compositional images of flat surfaces, typically BSE, the easiest way to get color is to associate to this single number an arbitrary color, using a color lookup table i.e. each gray level is replaced by a chosen color. This method is known as false color. On a BSE image, false color may be performed to better distinguish the various phases of the sample. On textured surface images, as an alternative to simply replacing each gray level by a color, a sample observed by an oblique beam allows researchers to create an approximative topography image see further section, photometric 3D rendering from a single SEM image. Such topography can then be processed by 3D rendering algorithms for a more natural rendering of the surface texture. Topic. SEM image coloring Very often, published SEM images are artificially colored. This may be done for aesthetic effect, to clarify structure or to add a realistic appearance to the sample and generally does not add information about the specimen. Coloring may be performed manually with photo editing software, or semi-automatically with dedicated software using feature detection or object-oriented segmentation. Topic. Color built using multiple electron detectors In some configurations more information is gathered per pixel, often by the use of multiple detectors. As a common example, secondary electron and backscattered electron detectors are superimposed and a color is assigned to each of the images captured by each detector, with an end result of a combined color image where colors are related to the density of the components. This method is known as density-dependent color SEM DDC SEM. Micrographs produced by DDC SEM retain topographical information, which is better captured by the secondary electrons detector and combine it to the information about density, obtained by the backscattered electron detector. <laughs> Topic. Analytical signals based on generated photons Measurement of the energy of photons emitted from the specimen is a common method to get analytical capabilities. Examples are the energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy detectors used in elemental analysis and cathodoluminescence microscope systems that analyze the intensity and spectrum of electron-induced luminescence in for example, geological specimens. In SEM systems using these detectors it is common to color code these extra signals and superimpose them in a single color image, so that differences in the distribution of the various components of the specimen can be seen clearly and compared. Optionally, the standard secondary electron image can be merged with the one or more compositional channels, so that the specimen's structure and composition can be compared. Such images can be made while maintaining the full integrity of the original signal data, which is not modified in any way. Topic: 3D in SEM. SEMs do not naturally provide 3D images contrary to SPMs. However, 3D data can be obtained using an SEM with different methods as follows. Topic. 3D SEM reconstruction from a stereo pair Photogrammetry is the most metrologically accurate method to bring the third dimension to SEM images. Contrary to photometric methods next paragraph, photogrammetry calculates absolute heights using triangulation methods. The drawbacks are that it works only if there is a minimum texture, and it requires two images to be acquired from two different angles, which implies the use of a tilt stage. Photogrammetry is a software operation that calculates the shift or disparity for each pixel between the left image and the right image of the same pair. Such disparity reflects the local height. Topic Photometric 3D SEM reconstruction from a four-quadrant detector. Shape from shading. 
This method typically uses a four-quadrant BSE detector alternatively for one manufacturer, a three-segment detector. The microscope produces four images of the same specimen at the same time, so no tilt of the sample is required. The method gives metrological 3D dimensions as far as the slope of the specimen remains reasonable. Most SEM manufacturers now 2018 offer such built-in or optional four-quadrant BSE detector, together with proprietary software allowing to calculate a 3D image in real time. Other approaches use more sophisticated and sometimes GPU-intensive methods like the optimal estimation algorithm and offer much better results at the cost of high demands on computing power. In all instances, this approach works by integration of the slope, so vertical slopes and overhangs are ignored. For instance, if an entire sphere lies on a flat, little more than the upper hemisphere is seen emerging above the flat, resulting in wrong altitude of the sphere apex. The prominence of this effect depends on the angle of the BSE detectors with respect to the sample, but these detectors are usually situated around and close to the electron beam, so this effect is very common. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Photometric 3D rendering from a single SEM image. This method requires an SEM image obtained in oblique low angle lighting. The gray level is then interpreted as the slope, and the slope integrated to restore the specimen topography. This method is interesting for visual enhancement and the detection of the shape and position of objects, however the vertical heights cannot usually be calibrated, contrary to other methods such as photogrammetry. Other types of 3D SEM reconstruction Inverse reconstruction using electron material interactive models Vertical stacks of SEM micrographs plus image processing software Multi-resolution reconstruction using single 2D file, high-quality 3D imaging may be an ultimate solution for revealing the complexities of any porous media, but acquiring them is costly and time-consuming. High-quality 2D SEM images, on the other hand, are widely available. Recently, a novel three-step, multiscale, multi-resolution reconstruction method is presented that directly uses 2D images in order to develop 3D models. This method, based on a Shannon entropy and conditional simulation, can be used for most of the available stationary materials and can build various stochastic 3D models just using a few thin sections. Topic. Applications of 3D SEM One possible application is measuring the roughness of ice crystals. This method can combine variable pressure environmental SEM and the 3D capabilities of the SEM to measure roughness on individual ice crystal facets, convert it into a computer model and run further statistical analysis on the model. Other measurements include fractal dimension, examining fracture surface of metals, characterization of materials, corrosion measurement, and dimensional measurements at the nanoscale step height, volume, angle, flatness, bearing ratio, coplanarity, etc. <laughs> Gallery of SEM images The following are examples of images taken using an SEM. See also